We do have a few minutes for questions, so we've got some microphones around the room. Um, and so if you have a question, uh, uh, either send it up to us or, or give us uh, a yell and we'll make sure. I, we did get one question that came in um, from the webcast, and this one is for, for Bert. There's been a lot of discussion in the Trump administration about lowering the corporate tax rate. And what do you see about that, and what impact will that have on many of the things that you've talked about today? So, so there, no doubt about it. There's a there's a lot of tax reform that is out there, and and um, and there is a lot of conversation about lowering the corporate tax rate. Um, lowering the lowering the corporate tax rate over a short period of time is stimulative to our economy. There's no doubt about it. Uh, that allows small businesses to actually have more and more um, uh, of their profits that they could keep, and they can think about reinvesting and hiring and growing. Um, there, there's a, there's a flip side to that. And that is the, the fact that we are using deficit spending. Um, and we all know what the size of our deficit's all about. And so you've got this push-pull of those two elements. You know, the interesting part, and, and we've been studying this for a while, if you really want to know sort of where the rise of this populism have come, and a big chunk of that around this tax policy question, it's really come from small businesses. I mean, we, you know, there's, the, there's a poll in the small businesses that happen every month and every quarter, and it asks them what are their biggest struggles. Um, and what is at the top of that list is governments in the way, taxes, and regulation. Um, that has been growing over the last five years. Uh, there is no surprise that that's one of the reasons why that you've seen sort of a grow in populism, whether it be Bernie Sanders or, or Donald Trump or others. And so the reality is this element of corporate tax um, is, is a part of that. Um, and those are, it's a mixed sword, right? Um, but the reality is over the short period of time, lowering corporate taxes can be quite stimulative. Um, it's one of the more stimulative elements uh, for economies and could easily see that. But remember we talked about the more you stimulate and the faster your growth, the quicker you are to excesses, the quicker you are to excesses, the quicker you are to overs, the quicker you are to overs, the quicker it is over, and therefore we have a recession, right? So it's a real mixed bag in where we uh, think through these things. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how that works and plays out. Okay, if I could see a hand, if anybody has a question out in the audience. Somebody always has to be sm smart and ask first. Do I see one way in the back? Here we go. Thank you. Uh, great presentations to both of you. Thanks. Uh, Mike Pritchard, University of Colorado Foundation. I have a question for Patty around uh, the legislative session that just began. I'm curious if you could give a little prognosis on will they make advances in construction, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, the construction defects and then also transportation. I know that's a huge thing. Where do you see that going or do we have gridlock? Well, you know, my crystal ball on that is a little fuzzy. I mean, we're certainly starting out at the beginning of the session with some um, great ideas, and hopefully those will move forward on the construction defect side where, you know, the, the introduction of the bills will really take, um, kind of take stab at one segment of construction defects. I mean, we're still hoping for something that will, We'll take an overall look that will look at insurance issues as well as arbitration issues, that type of thing. So it remains to be seen, but we're hopeful on that. As far as the transportation side, I mean, a lot of that will hinge, hinge upon uh, Colorado's aptitude or attitude, I should say, to take on some more taxes. Um, you know, because certainly I, I think we're at a point in our transportation infrastructure and our transportation needs that we need to recognize that we need to ante up a little bit because uh, mobility is so critical to our business growth, so critical to our, our residents being able to get around, and we have to ante up and be able to pay for that. So um, I, I'm hopeful on that stance as well, that we will generate some of those extra dollars that are needed for transportation in the state because we need a lot of extra dollars in the state. Great question. Who else? Yes, sir, over here. Stand up and just be really loud. <laughs> um, given that and your outlook for inflation, uh, what is your outlook for, for commodities like gold? You, you might know, repeat the question about yeah, the dollar. The, the question was really uh, largely around the dollar um, and, and the element of the dollar. And, and 
listen, you, you know, energy was a, was a major issue last year, but nothing was more important than the dollar last year. I mean, the, the dollar in late 2015 and throughout much of 2016 was extremely strong, and that has huge impacts on the earnings of companies. Um, you remember that roughly 25, 20 to 25 percent of, of profits for S&P 500 companies happen overseas that are subject to uh, negative implications of the dollar. Some overseas isn't implicated by the dollar, but some are, and about 25 percent is. So the way you think about doing the math is if you think that, that the dollar increased roughly 20 percent or so year over year at periods last year, you multiply that by 25 percent, which is how much S&P 500 profits are. So 25% of 20 is, what's a, what's a quarter of 20? Five? 5% um, anchor, 5% anchor that we were pulling along for earnings growth. So what that really means is that if earnings was going to be 5%, because of the dollar, it was actually zero, right? So that's the impact of the dollar. So what causes the dollar to move higher? Well, inflation causes the dollar to move higher. That certainly um, is, is, we're starting to, to see a little bit of that. Um, higher interest rates um, is gonna move the dollar higher. And so we forecast that the dollar is likely upward bound, but we don't think it's gonna get too out of whack like it was in much of 15 and 16. If it does, if it does, then you do have problems like we did in 15 and 16. Because remember, anything priced in dollars then gets hurt and all commodities are priced in dollars. So that was one of the real elements as it relates to energy and others. We saw the decrease in, in price there. Part of it was supply. We certainly added a lot of supply in the US through our energy renaissance. But another big chunk was the dollar that drove the price lower as well. And so we've gotta be very, very, very careful and watch the dollar. It's gonna be a big component piece. If it surges, to me, if you think about the risk of our forecast, Sorry, can you hear me? Yep, the risk of our forecast. One of the big risks to our forecast is around growth, earnings growth, and one of the biggest risks to that, the dollar. So we've gotta be very careful that we don't see the dollar get out of, uh, out of bounds too far. If it does, it will be a huge, huge negative, a huge headwind for growth, and could end up creating the volatility that we saw at the end of 15 and throughout the beginning of 16. That said, we think the dollar is going to somewhat stay in normalized bands, upward bound, but normalized bands, and we'll be able to weather that, um, which means that commodity prices should base more on demand and less on the dollar, and we should see higher, in, um, higher demand for commodities as our economy will continue to grow a little faster, especially the global economy with emerging markets and others. Here's another question from the webcast uh, for Bert. What is the interest rate break even point where it actually helps as opposed to hurts? Is there a point that the Fed looks at for that balance? Yeah, and, 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 and it was a slide I wish I would have shown. Um, the magic number is just south of 5%. What, what, what one of the things we correlate is we correlate um, interest rates and um, stock market moves. We, we correlate those two things. And what you find is that the two-year move in stocks and rising rates, they are positively correlated, meaning they move in a similar direction until rates get to about 5%. So, so let me just say that again. Rise in rates, upward rates, rate hikes, correlate positively to stock prices going up. Those are two good things. Rising rates is good, at least it's good for some elements, right? We talked about how it's holding back our potential. But then secondly, rising stock prices are good too. So those are two pretty good things and we get them until you get to 5%. Once you get to 5%, that then turns negative. Rising rates means declining stock prices. At that point, that's where things get break even, where you begin to start to see it be detrimental. And around 5% is where people begin to start thinking about, do I really want to take a mortgage out? And do I really want to take that extra loan? Or from a business, do I really want to think about a growth loan? There's a point where we begin to say, at 2% rates, that's fine. Three, that's probably fine. Three and a half, that's fine. Four, five, that's where I get concerned. So somewhere between four and a half and five is generally the point where it switches over from being a help to a hurt. That's great. That's helpful. We have time for one or two more before our commitment to getting you out of here exactly at nine. We have one over here in the corner. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Excellent presentation. Um, my name is Larry Kaffa, and I love taxes. And <laughs> 
Get and that guy out of here. Well, <laughs> security! No, true, I, I wrote a book called Taxes Can Be Fun and Sexy. Uh, now the thing that I'm concerned about, and I want to know if this is being considered when y'all are doing your forecasts. When President Reagan came out with the 86 Tax Reform Act, which I thought was fantastic, it overwhelmed the Internal Revenue Service for over 25 years because of S corporations and they just couldn't catch up to, into, uh, up to it until just a couple of years ago. And now, with this now shift to the corporate rates, which is gonna be great for my large corporate clients, if you're gonna be an S corporation with low corporate rates, S will stand for schmuck. Because you don't wanna pass through yep. and avoid. And so there's gonna be a great shift and small businesses, emerging businesses, are gonna get, um, relatively speaking, pummeled. So, how is this being anticipated? Are the dominoes that I see being anticipated, not just the interest rates, et cetera, in doing these forecasts? Patty, that was a hard question. Do you want to take that one? <laughs> uh, uh, no. Uh, do you want to take it? Well, let me just say, in, in Colorado, I mean, certainly since our tax policy, our, our taxable income in Colorado is directly tied to what happens at the federal level, we are very concerned with what happens at the federal level. So, Bert, take it away. I think you just, I think you just asked the question again. I think is, <laughs> uh, no, no. Um, so it, it's complicated. And, and, and the reality is um, when we try to do our forecasts, and I think when folks are thinking through forecasts, you try to think through those elements. It's fuzzy right now. The crystal ball is unknown. And the real question is, does the administration understand all those component pieces? This gets back to the element of, do we take Donald Trump seriously or literally? And this is what's going to be interesting, because if we're taking him seriously, then he's going to think through those exact points. If we're taking him literally, then he's not thinking through those things likely, and we're going to end up with some issues. So this is the real component piece. Will we get serious or will we get literal? I have to think that he is surrounded by, and Congress as others, and industry, like yourself that will write wonderful books, and all of us as business owners will begin to talk to our politicians and our elected officials and tell them that we want them to be serious and we want them to understand these ramifications, and hopefully they will. Um, remember, it takes a while to put these through. There's not an executive order that Donald Trump can sign that will change our tax policy. We will have a lot of dialogue to get that done. On average, it takes somewhere between six and nine months for that to work through for a new administration to think about some new fiscal elements. So that's not happening today. That's not happening next week. There are going to be discussions for a while. What I am hopeful, what I am hopeful is that we address exactly what you're asking and more and understanding and taking serious all these impacts, not just literal, but serious. Because we can think about sort of the bumper sticker of let's lower taxes, fine. We can all shake our heads to that one perhaps, or many of us could. But the reality is how you do that and what the downstream impacts are, that's where the magic is. And we've got to take that serious and not just literal. I think that's a thoughtful answer on which to end our session today. And I'd like to ask you to help me thank uh, Patty and Bert today for joining us. I know we've been, it really did a fabulous job as always. And I know we've got a lot of great things to think about. And I would just like to close with part of what our brand statement is at Vectra Bank. And it was sort of exemplified today. One is to help us all be students of the economy. The smarter we are, the more we can be players in our community. That commitment to excellence, that commitment to knowledge is part of our brand. A second lesson from today is our commitment to honoring legacy of leaders like Tom Clark and Sheila Bogdanowitz, people that really made a contribution to our community. That's part of the Vectra brand. And the final statement I would say today that I come away very inspired is that as a company, uh, we are committed to finding the positive side of the cracks in life that we encounter. So thank you all very much for coming today. We really appreciate your attendance.